Hello Newpick, this is Matt Taylor again, coming back for another tutorial. This is going to be an extension of the One Hot Gem prediction tutorial, so there should be a link to that up there or over there. I haven't decided where I'm going to put it yet. Um, but uh, if you have not gone through that tutorial or at least watched it, you probably should just to get an idea of where we're starting from. Uh, so that's where I am at right now. Um, I am in the uh, Nupic repository in the examples folder in uh, OPF clients hot gem prediction one gem. So that is the uh, the hot gem tutorial that I was just referring to. Uh, so we're going to start with this um, and move onward to add anomaly detection uh, to it. Uh, so right now it currently just charts predictions uh, against real values of energy consumption coming from a uh, gym in Australia. We're going to update this so that it also exports an anomaly score and an anomaly likelihood. Um, that's what we're going to do. So first I am just going to copy this whole directory somewhere into my sandbox. One gym anomaly. And then we'll hop down there and take a look at this code. <clears throat> so this is the stuff that's currently in the repo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of some of this stuff uh, so we can kind of start fresh. Things that we don't need. <clears throat> we don't need any PYC files. We don't need any swarm stuff. So now we're just left with a run script. There is a model parameters file in here in model params and then just the input file which is a CSV and this output processor which just either dumps it to a file or plots it on the screen. This should run just the way it is if I put run plot there we go we get a plot so this is the old uh, prediction tutorial from the hot gem. Um, just going to cancel that so that this is what we're going to be updating. So I don't want just predictions, I also want anomalies. So let's uh, talk about how we want to get that. First of all, let's look into the model parameters directory. Let's get rid of that PYC file. And all we have is this rec center hourly model params. Let's take a look at this. Rec center hourly model params. So the easiest, and, and it's really simple to uh, change this to an anomaly model. Uh, we just go find inference type in the model params and we want to change that. It's currently a temporal multi-step. We're going to change that to a temporal anomaly. So there we go. It is now an anomaly model. It will still give us predictions and it will also give us an anomaly score. Let's test out that it is actually doing that. Let's go into the run script here. And down in the main loop, uh, where we're looping through all of the rows in the input file, here's where we're getting our result from the model when we call run, we get this results object. Um, and here's where we're extracting the prediction. I'm going to get an anomaly ah, score, and that, that will be inside of the results object inferences and it is keyed on anomaly score. So I should have an anomaly score here at this point. Let's just print that just so you can we can prove to ourselves it's actually being created. So now if I run run I'm not going to do the plot option. We should see there it is a whole bunch of anomaly scores for each row of data being dumped onto the screen at the same time that it's writing the output CSV file. Um, just let that run through, or I could just kill it, doesn't really matter. But there we at least see we're getting anomaly scores. Okay, and we have our uh, rec center out, which now has uh, we haven't updated this, so this always this still just has the prediction, but that's what was generated. So we've got an anomaly score now. We need to do something a little more interesting with it. Um, one thing I'm going to do here is uh, get rid of this old nupic output.py. This is the 
the Python module that's handling all of the output from NuPic. It takes the uh, the actual values and the predictions and either plots them in matplotlib or it writes them to a file. I have an updated version of this. Um, I think it's uh, I think it is right here in my home. We'll just copy that here. It's called NuPic Anomaly Output. So let's take a quick look at the the new NuPic Anomaly Output. NuPic Anomaly Output. Um, it operates much in the same way as the old NuPic output that was used in the first tutorial, um, but uh, it has simpler simpler inputs, uh, simpler interface. So it assumes you're just going to be dealing with one model. And it also converts an anomaly score into an anomaly likelihood. And it does that using um, this little helper guy that's now in the NuPic library. Let me go back to the top here. So now in NuPic algorithms, there is uh, a module called anomaly likelihood. And that's what we're, we're doing. That's what we're using down here. So I'm creating, a, I'm just calling it an anomaly likelihood helper. And that's it. I'm just creating a new instance of this anomaly likelihood class. And then down in the, um, <clears throat> uh, where is it? Anomaly likelihood helper. There we go. In the, in the write function of this, where I'm sending it the timestamp value, predicted value, and anomaly score, I am calling a method on it called the anomaly probability. Um, based on the current value, the current anomaly score, and the current timestamp, and that will get me an anomaly likelihood. And then that's all that I'm that's all that I'm using it for. I'm doing the same thing in the NuPic plot output down here in in the write function, uh, except that I'm not writing it out to a CSV file. I am uh, plotting it. So there's the anomaly likelihood, and I'm have a line for the anomaly likelihood and that's what's getting plotted. Okay. So it is updated to handle anomaly scores and we're going to update the run script to use this instead. So let's do that. All right, here where I'm importing NuPic output, I'm going to say from NuPic anomaly output import NuPic output as uh, actually, what am I trying to do? Import import new pick anomaly anomaly. Let me spell this right. Anomaly output as new pick ugh, new pick output. There we go. Okay, new pick output is here is where it's instantiated. So we've got a little logic here. So if, the, if there is a plot option, we instantiate a new pick plot output. If there is a file option, we instantiate yet another class. Uh, so this anomaly output um, module is simplified from the original one that we used in the first prediction tutorial. I had plans in the first prediction tutorial, and I still do, of turning it into a multiple model tutorial. So I formatted the NuPic output module to accept um, many models and eventually will plot or write many model outputs. But for this example, it's just going to really be a singleton. So uh, for example, this constructor for NuPic plot output was taking a list of names and it currently now only takes a name. So that's one thing that needs to change real quick. and. Let's go to, I think it's the write function. It's the last thing we need to change where it used to take a list of, or lists of values. It now only takes one value. And there is an additional value, anomaly score. Okay, so now we're going to write out the timestamp, the energy consumption, NuPix prediction, and the current anomaly score for that prediction. And we'll get rid of that print statement. Um, and this may be the only thing that really needs to be done. Let's find out. Okay, so I've updated my run. Let's run and, well, let's not plot. Let's just run it first to make sure everything writes. Okay, so it's 
it is uh, running through the input, feeding every line into NewPick, and it should be writing an output file uh, that contains an anomaly score and an anomaly likelihood. And I'll get into that in just a minute. <clears throat> so there we have it. It wrote out to rec center hourly out, and we have consumption, prediction, anomaly score, and anomaly likelihood. And I'll explain these values soon. Uh, it looks a little bit better if you plot this. Uh, so we could, uh, this is just CSV, we could plot this in a spreadsheet, but <clears throat> let's actually just run this with the plot option and the NUPIC output will take care of everything and plot it using matplotlib. So here it comes and what you're seeing here on the top graph uh, is the actual and predicted values. The blue is actual values, that's the truth coming in from the input CSV file. The green are the predicted values, the values NUPIC is predicting and they're shifted so they are aligned. So for every line you see the actual value and the value NUPIC predicted would be at that point in time. So these uh, yellow bars indicate weekends. So this, this data um, I think is in 15 minute intervals um, over a span of several months. And so we're looking at energy consumption in a building, in a, a gym, and um, if you remember the old tutorial, this data should look very familiar, but I've, I've done a little bit of work to emphasize where the weekends are in this data. The bottom chart is where we are plotting the anomaly score, which is the magenta line. That's the one that is not a flat line currently, and the anomaly likelihood. The anomaly score is kind of a raw indicator that comes out of NUPIC, and the anomaly likelihood is a kind of a post algorithm that uh, is being run outside of the NUPIC model entirely. Um, Numinta's uh, employee Subutai Ahmad had a presentation about this at our last hackathon and there's a link to it here or here. Um, and uh, if you want to know how this anomaly likelihood was calculated you should take a look at that. Uh, the code is now in NUPIC, so it's kind of just a helper utility. So let's take a look at this real quick. The anomaly likelihood is kind of a better indication. It's kind of a smooth line of, of, of the anomaly, so it's not as uh, uh, unstable. So we can, as we can see, as we move towards a weekend, once the anomaly likelihood kicks in, it kind of gives an indication that there's anomalies at Friday evenings and early Monday mornings could be because NUPIC has not recognized that there is a change in the energy consumption behavior at this gym on the weekends versus the weekdays. Um, but once it sees several weekends, uh, it starts to indicate less anomalous uh, data um, and things start, and start to kind of uh, level out as far as the anomaly score and likelihood go. Um, so if you look at this data, you can see um, that the weekend energy usage is definitely different from the weekday energy usage. Uh, so that is a weekly pattern. Um, if you look at the model params that we got from our swarm in the first prediction tutorial, you'll see that the encoders in that uh, model parameters included a uh, day of a week, and that would help to capture uh, weekly uh, patterns in the data. So here we're still seeing a, here's an, another high anomaly score uh, at the another Friday night early early Sunday morning anomaly here. I'm not really sure why this is happening but uh, it seems to indicate that there was something that went on in this time period that NUPIC I had not seen or did not expect to see. And here we're getting into a large chunk of anomalous behavior. Um, so this could indicate, as you can see, the, the total energy usage for this weekend is much higher than previous weekends. So I believe that the, uh, the anomaly scores, the high anomaly scores in this period of time are likely to do with just an overall jump in energy consumption at this gym. 
it could be uh, that they added more machines, added more classes, something like that. Some, some behavior at that gym changed to make the energy consumption increase, and Newpick uh, call, marked this as anomalous for quite a long period of time. But as with anything, once it gets used to the new patterns, uh, it becomes less and less anomalous. Uh, so after a while, the increased energy consumption at the gym is now the new normal. And Newpick calms down and goes back to business as usual and recognizes that these are the new patterns and adjusts itself to match those patterns. So uh, now we are a couple of months, almost three months into this data set and Nupik has become pretty comfortable with it at this point. Um, if you look at, you know, you look at the, uh, the peaks and valleys of the, the daily patterns, it's, it's getting pretty good at these daily patterns. It's getting the spike between the days where the cleaning crews typically come in and clean. It recognizes the weekends have a different pattern than the weekdays. Um, it still sees this occasional anomalous period, usually on Friday evenings, early uh, Saturday mornings. So I don't really know what that is, but uh, I'd be interested to, to figure out what exactly is in the data that m makes Nupik think that's something strange is going on there. It's, a, it's not quite comfortable with that time period. And you see it a, another, you know, a little bit of a jump here in the anomaly score, although it did not, it wasn't enough to set off the anomaly likelihood. So, uh, so that's an overview pretty much of, of uh, anomaly scores with a nice plot for you guys. Now I would like to kind of run uh, an experiment here. Um, uh, one thing that I find interesting is uh, now that we have our, our model params for this data, we've got something that can uh, take the output of it and, and plot it nicely in front of us. Let's mess with the data a little bit. Let's introduce some anomalies. Um, so uh, what I am going to do is I've got this little script that I wrote earlier um, called Remove Tuesdays. Let's take a look at this real quick. Remove Tuesdays. So basically what I'm going to do is um, take that input file and I'm going to copy it into a backup and I'm going to read each row in the file and I'm going to say if this is a date within October and it is a Tuesday, I'm going to flatline the energy consumption at 5 kilowatts, which will effectively make it seem like Tuesdays are off. So maybe So they're closed on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday in October, the gym was closed. And I'd like to do that just to see what it looks like when Newpick runs across October and suddenly Tuesdays are now uh, not consuming any energy at that gym. So let's do this. Run remove Tuesdays and let's take a look at the data now. Rec center, hourly CSV. Um, it's probably something 5.0. Uh, it's gonna be all the way down in October. October one. Oh, October slash one, no, October, okay, starts with 10, there we go, all right, so we are in October now, um, I don't know what day is what, but I'm just going to go down until I see a nice flat, there it is, this must be a Tuesday, first Tuesday in October is the 5th of October, as you can see, it's just flat line 5 all the way through that Tuesday. And all four Tuesdays within October are going to be, there's another flatlined five. So that is our new data. And we're just going to run it again. Let's run, let's plot, and let's see what this looks like. So here we go again. Initially, you got to understand that Nupik has never seen this data before. This model is brand new, created with the model params that we just looked at. And uh, it's never seen any data at all. So uh, initially, all it kind of does is predict what it just saw in the last step. And after a while, it gets a little bit better, a little bit better. The more patterns it sees, the better it gets. 
Um, so one other thing you'll notice is that the anomaly likelihood is, is flat initially. I think it just uh, starts off as a 0.5. The anomaly likelihood does some type of normalization algorithm over a history of anomalies, anomaly scores that it has seen. So it needs to bank up a certain amount of anomaly scores before it actually starts outputting real values. So it just starts off at 0.5 until it has seen enough anomaly scores to give an indication of the likelihood of the current state being anomalous based on all the anomaly scores that it has seen. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to fast forward a bit for you guys so you don't have to sit and watch this for ever. So enjoy. So here we are finally in October and we're going to see what happens on the first Tuesday of October where there's nothing going on in the gym. And as you can see, a big fat anomaly popped up because Nupik expected there to be the typical Tuesday energy usage at this point in the day. And uh, it confuses it a little bit throughout the week as well uh, because that's a pattern it has never seen before. And it's not sure if it is a part of its daily pattern change or a weekly pattern change. Um, so it's gonna take it a little bit uh, to comprehend this as a weekly pattern. So now we've got two Tuesdays, so the anomaly on the second missing Tuesday was lower. And here we're going into the third Tuesday in October where there is no energy usage. A little bit of an anomaly likelihood there, but not a whole lot. And I would expect that the fourth Tuesday in October there to be no anomaly Although, as you might notice, Nupik is still predicting that uh, there may be energy usage on that day. Although, the way Nupik works, it, it's not confused when there is no energy usage because it has seen that pattern now three times. Um, so, at this point, no anomaly on the missing Tuesday, the last one in October. Although, it did have a little spike when it thought, oh, there might be, but it was not uh, confused when there wasn't, wasn't any energy usage on that Tuesday. So here we're going into November, and Tuesday is back, and uh, Nupix fine with that. It has seen that pattern before, that's the typical pattern it saw for months before it got to October. So when Tuesday reappears, it is not anomalous. This is a sequence that it has seen before and it recognizes. Uh, so um, there is not an anomaly spike once Tuesday is thrown back into the mix. It just goes on recognizes it's back on the same pattern it was before and uh, it's doing pretty well in its predictions actually so it's, uh, it's got down the weekends really well it's got the weekdays really well it's not throwing very much anomalous uh, it's not throwing many anomaly indications so um, that's about it so that was me showing you how to convert a uh, temporal multi-step inference type NUPIC model into a temporal anomaly model and take that anomaly score out and do something interesting with it. So I hope that you enjoyed that and you learned something. Please let me know if uh, you want to see any future tutorials on NUPIC in the comments below. Feel free to like the video. and. Uh, have a good day.